Well, I mean, of course, we're really excited to see where these treatments go. And at this point, understanding that the FDA is, uh, is actively looking at AR-101 as a possible treatment, and we're waiting for Bioskin to be resubmitted to uh, the FDA, and I think it will be exciting. I will say, sort of from the clinical allergist point of view, uh, again, coming back to this theme of patient choice is going to be very important. So uh, it would be really nice to have multiple options because it probably is not a one-size-fits-all when it comes to, to peanut allergic patients. Yeah, so I wonder, when you look at the data, sometimes they don't hit their pre-subscribed uh, primary endpoint, right? right? The DBV stuff comes to mind. But even within that, it seems like there are signs of efficacy, mm -hmm. right? And um, maybe it's like the next studies are really the ones where we start to get a better sense of, of as we talked about before, the personalization. And so you have this top line data, but maybe what we really want to see, as you mentioned, is that next set of studies. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. And in particular, I think when I look at the DBV data, uh, you have to wonder based on the phase two studies of whether it just takes longer. Mm. Uh, the phase two seemed to suggest year two and year three, perhaps there was a stronger efficacy rate there or a responder rate. Um, and obviously the Papitza that was just published uh, only shows that first 12 months. And so uh, I do know that they have ongoing safety and efficacy data uh, or studies that are ongoing. So it would be really uh, interesting to see what that, that data shows. Do you have a sense that, that we're gonna keep looking younger and younger? I, I do. You know, I think uh, at this stage, the data from all different modalities, so oral, epicutaneous, even sublingual, seem to suggest uh, not that it can't work in older uh, populations, but seems to have a stronger benefit in younger populations. And then in particular, when you think of something like, for example, oral, uh, it seems like it might be better tolerated in the younger groups. Mm. Uh, and then if you kind of add on top of that another layer of this whole idea of early introduction, leap. Uh, we're going to be likely diagnosing people with, uh, with peanut allergy much, much, much earlier. So I think it'll sort of just come hand in hand where we're going to be treating uh, younger at this point. So, um, so I think it'll be really exciting to see uh, both companies, uh, my understanding is half studies in that younger age group, age one to four. So it'd be really um, interesting to see what that data looks like as well. Yeah, and then the other part of, of what we do sometimes day to day is think about equivalence, right? right? You've been dosing with powder for a while, but then how do we get you to a real world solution? Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that, that concerns me is what do we do with our teenagers, right? right? I mean, how long are you going to continue to eat candy and not hide it in the closet? Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's a good, you know, it's a really nice segue into one of the abstracts that we were able to put together of, you know, what is life after OIT look like or a life after immunotherapy? Because, uh, again, it looks like the data suggests that you can increase that threshold and protect them, uh, but are they going to do that forever? You know, what is the, the real life sort of outcome of this? And so our, our abstract tried to show uh, we had patients even up to eight years after finishing their immunotherapy trial, uh, many of them had introduced some peanut food into their diet. So like you suggested, maybe it's a candy, maybe it's peanut flour that they mm -hmm. get at the store, whatever it might be. Um, and uh, it seemed to show that many were actually able to do it, which I think is important on multiple levels. One of them is just, again, being able to open up the diet a little bit. Uh, maybe relieve some of that anxiety that inherently comes with the allergy, and then perhaps that's also a way to kind of maintain that benefit that they got from the immunotherapy as well. Uh, and it, you know that might be especially important when we get into sort of those teen years yeah. and uh, when they're ready to sort of leave the home, and it might be harder for them to do sort of a treatment when they're out of sort of the, the, the family environment, and so perhaps this is a way that they sort of maintain stuff. Yeah. 